Based on nationwide consultations, the Education Ministry said parents and guardians prefer to receive the $10,000 grant on behalf of their children through money transfer services. In coming days, parents and guardians will be notified of the date, place and time when they will be able to collect the cash grant. According to the ministry, it is currently finalizing the number of children in the public education system. The Deputy Chief Education Officer Donna Chapman said the process is moving smoothly as the ministry is now awaiting the final list of names of children currently beginning year one in the area of nursery and year one in the area of primary. Additionally, the ministry is awaiting data on the number of students entering the secondary system at grade 7. It is anticipated that these lists will be submitted within the coming week to facilitate the completion of the master list of students eligible to receive the $10,000 cash grant. However, the ministry warned that anyone found engaging in any form of malpractice, fraudulent or corruption activity regarding the disbursement of this grant will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Finance Minister Dr. Ashni Singh had announced the disbursement of the education grants during his delivery of the 2014 budget. He had said that the grant, which will benefit 188,406 families of students of the public, nursery, primary and secondary schools, will cost a total of $2 billion. It will complement the National School Feeding Program and the National Uniform Program, which have contributed significantly to students' attendance rates increasing. Swetlana Marshall reporting for the Evening News. The Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce, along with the Guyana Tourism Authority, has collaborated with the Hurukaba River Resort to host the event, which promises to be exciting. Co-owner of the resort, Kit Nascimento, said that the event is being held here for the second time. He said the rally is growing and will see an improved number of yachts coming to Guyana. The yachts don't all arrive at one time. The first yacht, which is in fact the largest uh, sailing yacht that has ever uh, sailed into the Estacribo River, I think it is uh, 75 feet long if I'm right which is a, a very large yacht. That will be arriving, we expect, on Friday. The other yachts will arrive between, fr between Friday. The last yacht, we expect, will arrive probably on the 9th or the 10th. The event will be held at the Hurukaba River Resort, located on the west bank of the Yesukaba River, just 10 minutes away from Bartikam. The rally, which will feature a number of events including a beach party, also comes with three affordable packages. We have three different scales of tickets. There is a $15,000 ticket which includes all your transportation costs and your lunch. There will be a big barbecue. You'll have a variety of things to choose from whether you want fish or beef or you want chicken. So you'll have a barbecue inclusive with your ticket and that's a $15,000 ticket. You get here to the ministry location at 7.50 on Sunday morning and then you'll be transported by bus to the marina and then you'll be put on the boat and the boat will take you to Barti, uh, to Hurukabra. That was Jem Madu Nascimento, co-owner of the Hurukabra River Resort. The other tickets cost $12,000 for persons who would want to walk along with their own lunch. Another ticket cost $7,000 is also available for patrons who would wish to attend the event with their own vessels. Director of the Guyana Tourism Authority, Indranaut Howelsing, said that government has always been pleased to work along with the private sector to promote tourism in Guyana. For the Evening News, Alexis Rodney. While the countrywide cleanup program has been dubbed a success by government, residents say they are still not satisfied. Yesterday, the local government ministry, which is spearheading the program, said that two additional contractors have been appointed to clean various parts of the city. Some residents are contending that attention is being placed in the wrong areas, while the garbage remains a major problem in other areas. Primarily affected by the disgraceful pileup of garbage, garbage are areas including the various markets and other places around central Georgetown. Here are the views of some of the persons on the streets. Uh, Nobody would want to come to a dirty place and, and, and enjoy themselves. The place is filthy and smelling stink. 
Why so? Boys don't look after it. It is very, very bad. For the people them that selling around the market area, they too have fault in doing that. The garbage, they, they throwing the garbage there, they're selling there, and some of them getting up, left in the, the garbage in the same place. You know, the place is so filthy all around. I think they ain't doing enough. They ain't doing enough to God, God put out more workers with vehicle for assist the people. They, they're picking up revenue. What are they doing with the money? They send the vehicle breakdown. They ain't getting vehicle. They ain't getting vehicle to pick up this garbage. So the garbage leaving there from days and days it's piling up. Welcome back and now for a look at some news in the region. The 18-year-old nephew of Antiguan Prime Minister Gaston Brown was shot and killed on Monday night. Police confirm that Albert Pressurman Brown was killed, the 10th person murdered in Antigua so far for this year. Antigua's Observer Media is reporting that police spokesperson, Senior Sergeant William Holder, said that they're following some leads at this time. Holder appealed to the general public with any information to contact the nearest police station. The teenager's father, Glenn Brown, discovered his son lying motionless in an alley. He said his son was shot multiple times in the chest and he had no idea who did it or why. And internationally, a man who killed an unarmed woman who banged on his door at night has been sentenced to 17 years in prison. Theodore Wafer was convicted of the second-degree murder of Renisha McBride, 19, who was drunk when she crashed her car near his home in suburban Detroit. Before sentencing, he apologized to her family. He said he will carry that guilt and sorrow forever. The case raised the issue of the gun use in self-defense in the United States. The nine-day trial was looked at, whether, looked at whether the 55-year-old had a reasonable belief that his safety was under threat when he was awoken in the night by the pounding on his door. The Demerara Harbour Bridge is expected to close from 12 hours 30 on Thursday, September 4, for a period of one and a half hours. And the Burbies River Bridge is expected to be closed at 11 hours 15 on Thursday, September 4, for a period of one and a half hours. Stay with us. Sport is next. The tournament forms a part of the preparation for the regional 50-over and 4-day competitions. It is also being used as a benchmark to select the local squad to participate in those regional competitions. This year, the GCB has included the successful on 19 team, which won both the 3-day and 50-over titles for the first time in the history of regional youth cricket, making it a 4-team tournament. The regional season will start in November and will have a 4-day cricket being played in a home-and-away format, paving the way for a minimum of 10 games in the tournament. The four-day tournament will then break in January to make way for the Super 50 Limited Overs tournament. The four-day competition will resume thereafter and conclude in March. Meanwhile, Demerara coach Garvin Ned is full of confidence. He possesses the necessary firepower to deliver another successful campaign. Ned, speaking with this sportscast on Wednesday, said once his team play to their full potential, they can be a real destructive force. Uh, we got a group of players who are keen, um, keen to showcase the class, you know, uh, with the franchise cricket in place now, uh, they were looking to, to market themselves uh, and this cricket they basically is uh, for them to perform. And they're keen about coming to the tournament and to defend the title. Round 2 is built for September 6 with the National Honor 19 team playing Essequibo at DCC and Burbies face Demeraro at Everest. The third and final round is scheduled for September 8 with Burbies taking on Essequibo at Everest and Demeraro challenging the National Honor 19 team at GCC. The final is set for September 13 with the following day being a reserved day. The four-day format will get going on September 18. <laughs> 